Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. This is the 25th of July, and a small number, but some pretty nice updates this week. As always, if this is useful, a like, subscribe, comment, and share is appreciated, and hit that bell icon. New videos this week. So I actually created another study cram video. A lot of people have asked me to create one for the Power Platform, so I took the exam, did a little bit of studying, worked out kind of what was in it, what you needed to know, and created a study cram for PL900. That kind of completes the fundamental set now I have available. And then I created a video about express route latency. This has come up quite a few times about what is my express route latency? What impacts it? So I kind of go through what are the components of that express route connection what can impact that latency, which bits I can kind of tell you, and which bits are things you're gonna to have to kind of monitor and work out. New features, so on the compute side, really just the Azure VMware solution is now also available in Canada East. So remember the Azure VMware solution is that ability to actually have kind of the ESX hosts running in Microsoft data centers it enables me to really take my existing VMware workloads and move them very easily up into the Azure data centers. I don't have to retool, I don't have to learn new things. I can pretty much just take them and move them and run them in Azure. I can still go and leverage Azure resources. I can still have connectivity, hybrid connectivity through Express Route Global Reach. And so now if I'm based closer to Canada East, I can now have that deployment. On the networking side, Azure Firewall Premium goes GA. So this is huge. And really, on Sunday, I'm going to record a deep dive video on Azure Firewall. A lot of you have asked me to create a video on Azure Firewall. I've been waiting for Premium to GA. So this weekend, I'm going to record it. I will post it Tuesday, and I'll go into all of the new details in detail. Some of the big things, though, is now it can actually do TLS inspection. So I can have that encryption between the client and the server I'm talking to, Azure Firewall Premium can actually now be that man in the middle and inspect the traffic. So that gives me now a whole set of new things I can do. URL filtering, even for encrypted traffic. Web categorization, even for encrypted and plain text traffic. Um, intrusion detection system, again, across plain text and encrypted traffic now. So a really cool set of things now available. And again, Tuesday, I'll post a big deep dive video all about Azure Firewall, both the standard and the premium. And then there are some new network traffic analytics insights. So remember the whole point of traffic analytics is it gives me that information built off of kind of the NSG flow logs. So through those flow logs, we get information about, hey, the source, the destination, the type of traffic, what it's doing. So there were some additional insights actually have been added to that traffic analytics solution as part of Network Watcher. So if we quickly, let's kind of jump over and take a look at this. So I'm gonna just jump and go, and if I just search for my Network Watcher over here, I can scroll down and I have my traffic analytics here at the bottom on the left. And what they've added are a few different things. So firstly, there is now who is data and geographic locations for the public IPs that are interacting with your environment. It's also going to show me when it's a malicious IP, information like DNS domain, the threat type, the threat description. So if I was to scroll down, and let's say I look at malicious traffic, well, I can see, hey, look, there's this malicious IP over here. I can see, hey, look, there's this malicious IP address. So what I could actually now do is if I click on this, well, now it shows me the whole who is data. So Microsoft, obviously they're doing some scanning, but they're saying the threat type is a botnet and the threat detection, hey, they're connecting to an MS SQL service, tempting either a brute force or run malicious SQL queries. So it's giving me that information kind of front and center now. Additionally, it's now tagging virtual machine scale sets. So I can see over here, if I had kind of VMSS 
um, types of traffic going through this, now I can see it based on the scale set, not just that virtual machine. And then the other change they actually made was around kind of the traffic um, distribution. So if I quickly, let's actually go and look at a map of my network regions. So if these are my Azure regions, what it's now gonna show me is the traffic between availability zones. So on this map, I could click, hey look, where do I have actual distribution? So I have in South Central. And then we have this kind of more details. If I click more details, what it's gonna show me down the bottom is interzone traffic. Now I don't have kind of AZs using in South Central, but here I'd actually be able to see the details of all of that interzone traffic. Now that would help me see the amount of the data, it might help me plan for future kind of costs associated when I pay for that interzone network traffic. So we have these changes kind of made and available. So you can go and check those out. So that is GA. On the storage side, so shared disks have been available for a while now. Some of the disks you use have a max shares property. And that's a number of virtual machines that can connect to that at the same time. It supports things like SCSI 2 persistent reservation. So then I can run clustering software on the nodes to make it shared storage. Um, things like Windows failover clustering, I could use cluster shared volumes on that. Now before this was just for certain SKUs, uh, ultra disks, some of the premium SKUs. Well now what they've done is all of also the premium and standard SSDs now support shared disks. So if we go and look at this, it will actually tell us, well what's the max number of shares? So it does vary. So it's showing me here for the premium SSDs, for these certain disk sizes here, hey look, you can have three VMs connected concurrently. Um, as they get bigger, you get more and more connections. So that's the premium. On the standard, it kind of says all standard SSD sizes and are supported um, for this. And then ultra disk, the maximum value is five. So it, now we have this capability um, across all of the different disk SKUs. So nice change there to actually leverage that. And again, I can use that on both Win Windows and Linux. Database, just one change. So Azure Database for MySQL Flexible Server. Remember, these are the managed database offerings built off of the open source solutions. Flexible is built off of VMs instead of the kind of container technology used by the single server. So the flexibles let us stop, start, use burstable VMs, etc. What this auto grow feature does is normally I provision the amount of space, a capacity for storage. If I hit that capacity, the database goes into a read only mode and obviously stops being able to do other types of operation. Auto grow, as the name implies, will auto grow that capacity up to the maximum that is possible. I think it's 16 tebibytes. Now it does behave differently based on that size. So if it's less than or equal to 100 gigabytes, then it's increased by five gigabytes when it hits 10% of the provision storage left. If it's more than 100 gigabytes, then it's gonna increase in 5% increments every time there's less than 10 gigabytes left. So there's slightly different behavior depending on if I'm 100 gigabytes or less or greater than 100 gigabytes. But the point is, it will just auto grow for you. Then miscellaneous. So there's now some built in policies for Network Watcher. So as I just kind of showed the, the traffic analytics, Network Watcher is built on those NSG flow logs. So they've now added built in policies so I can find places where I don't actually have those traffic analytics enabled. So that's an audit policy. And then there are actually deploy if not exist policies to go and actually do the configuration at a subscription or resource group level to actually enable it. If we jump back over quickly, we can find these kind of super simply. If I just go and look at policy and look at my definitions. And what I'll just search for is traffic ANA and I'll see all of those traffic analytics policies 
that are now just built in. So it's always going slowly for me. I don't know why it doesn't like me. Um, but, but that's really all you have to do. Again, you'll see these three policies available for you. An audit policy, here we go. So let's search for traffic ANA. So here we can see we have this network watcher flow logs should have traffic analytics enabled. So that's an audit, so it will tell me if it's not. Then we have these two policies that are really doing the same thing. It's just one of them won't replace if there is an existing configuration, whereas the other one will. So these will actually go and deploy and do those configurations for you. So you can go and check those out. So really making it easier to just get on board to that network watcher. Better Azure Monitor and Grafana integration. So remember, Grafana is that open source visualization and analytics software solution. And what they've really done is now with Grafana 8, I can now actually query the Azure Resource Graph. So remember, the Azure Resource Graph is all about that super fast ability to query at scale information about my Azure resources using kind of that same Kusto query language. So now from Grafana, I can actually target Azure Resource Graph. Also, what they added was, if you think about running Grafana actually on Azure, uh, in a virtual machine, in an app service plan, well, that VM or app service plan can have a managed identity. I can now, now tell Grafana, hey, this resource you're running on in Azure has a managed identity, use it. So then Grafana will use the managed identity to connect to Azure resources like Azure Monitor to actually get access and be able to show the various pieces of information. So it's going to simplify that authentication experience for Grafana out to Azure by just using that managed identity. And then also, when it now shows metrics in Grafana, I can actually, from the context menu, just say view in Azure portal, and it will link to the Azure portal to show me those metrics directly in the Azure portal. So some nicer integration. The Azure Monitor agent, so remember this is the replacement for the Log Analytics agent, the Diagnostics extension, Telegraph. I did a video on this a couple of weeks ago about the detail. Now it actually supports either using a proxy or I can use the Log Analytics gateway for that HTTPS-based communication that the agent makes to Azure Monitor. That can be anonymous or a username, password, basic authentication. But that's now available for us. And just a little bit of, I don't know if fun is the right word, Microsoft kind of quietly re released their own Linux distribution. So this is CBL Mariner. So that's Common Base Linux, CBL. You can download it. Now, it is not a desktop. It is designed to be a server side. I could run it in a container as the container host. It's super lightweight. If we actually go and look at the GitHub project, it, it tells us all about it. So we can see over here, hey, look, this is Microsoft distribution. They are using it for their own internal projects. It's telling you, hey, look, we're basing things um, like some of their IoT solutions some of the other Azure services, they want their own state-of-the-art, always current Linux distribution, this consistent platform. So this is what this CBL Mariner is. But you can actually go and download it, you can install it yourself, you can run it on things. They've just made it available for you. It has documentation. Um, so if you are curious, if you want to run a Microsoft Linux distribution, well, you can now do that. And that is it. Uh, I said just a few things, but some very exciting things, I think, in there. Um, as always, until next week, thanks for watching and take care.